ASHRAE 52.2, the current test method for recording an HVAC filter's particle capture efficiency. So what is ASHRAE 52.2, the 2012 revision, is the most current. What it does is it measures particle capture across three size ranges, 0.3 to 1 microns, 1 to 3 microns, and 3 to 10 microns. The filter is then given a MERV of 1 to 16, with the higher number being the more efficient. ASHRAE prescribes the use of particulate potassium chloride as the test dust. This was chosen because it is relatively easy and inexpensive to produce, very readily available, and is not harmful to the health of the technicians if they were to inhale it. Uh, obviously, non-synthetic outdoor or ambient air uh, would have been pref preferable. However, it was passed over because it lacks a statistically significant amount of particles over 3 microns in size, which, oddly, is a major part of 52.2. So that's kind of the first limitation you have to realize with 52.2 is a major portion of the test is done on a particle size that doesn't naturally occur with any significance in outdoor air. That just shows a picture of outdoor air and ashray dust magnified. Uh, outdoor air averages only about 0.8 microns in size where the ashray uh, KCL dust averages nearly 8 microns in size. Uh, most importantly in a 52-2 report then you should look at that smallest size range of 0.3 to 1 microns as those are going to be the majority of particles actually in the air. Just another way of graphically looking at the distribution of particles in the air and where uh, the ashray dust or test dust um, fits within within that distribution. Because of the large disparity between the size of the ashray test dust and the size of dust in ambient air, uh, dust holding capacity that's published on a 52.2 report is pretty much useless. There is one caveat for MERV-8, um, and that's because MERV-8 is only tested at the large particles uh, size range of 3 to 10 microns, so there is some limited value there for MERV-8. Um, but when we get into higher efficiency and more critical applications, it gets to be difficult. You know, on a MERV-14 filter that isn't, you know, its main focus is on the smaller particles, how valuable is the dust holding capacity on giant particles? It, it, there isn't any. So filter manufacturers have the opportunity to design filters one of two ways. They can design a filter to obtain a high dust holding capacity of test dust, make a filter look really good on paper, or they can design the filter to obtain a high dust holding capacity of outdoor ambient air to make a filter that actually performs well in use. So you can get two filters that look either equal or one that looks slightly worse on paper, but in use, when you actually put it in your air handler and use it, it will actually yeah, out, outperform the one that looks better on paper on occasion. Synthetic media is addressed in 52.2 uh, uh, in the 2012 revision right on page 3 of the standard. Uh, it states that filters made with synthetic. Now some filter manufacturers are calling this mechanical media. Uh, it demonstrates a high efficiency when clean and a drop in efficiency during their actual use cycle. It is, however, significantly cheaper to produce synthetic media. So manufacturers will continue to do this because they can produce it for cheaper and they can get a 52.2 report that makes the filter look really good. But again, in use, you have a struggle to maintain that efficiency and oftentimes it doesn't. So again, why buy a MERV 11 or 13 or 14 filter if it's just going to drop down well below that anyway? On the bottom of this slide, you can see a again magnified picture of a fine fiber MERV 14 versus a synthetic fiber MERV 14. Uh, very different in how they, they collect particles. 
because of the laboratory uh, constraints and setting of the 52-2 testing, um, especially again with filters that are MERV 11 or higher, on-site or in-situ testing tends to be the best way for you to really evaluate an air filter's performance. The things that you want to measure during this testing is the static pressure and VFD output. The CF, CFM needs to be consistent when data is collected. Um, all three of these, static pressure, VFD, and CFM, are integrated to one another and they'll affect each other. So if the CFM drops, your static pressure usually drops, and your VFD is usually down as a result of the lower CFM. At the same time, if the CFM is higher when you go to collect data than what it was the previous time you collected data, again, it's going to skew the results. So you need to be able to either just make a note of that or somehow override your controls to make that all consistent when you take, take the information. Particle counts, we want to do them on the smaller size again because that's, what an, that's what's in ambient air. Uh, usually for somewhere around that 0 0.3, 0 0.4 micron size, and then again around 2.5 to 3. Uh, these will provide enough particle counts, meaning there's enough particles that size in the air, to deliver reliable data. Uh, because MERV 8 filters are rated above these particle sizes, and the particle sizes that MERV 8 is designed to capture aren't statistically significant in ambient or outdoor air, it's very difficult to test reliably a MERV-8 um, in situ, in, in real world, because there's not enough of the particles to give you reliable data. The third thing to do when doing an in situ test is test often, every four to six weeks, uh, and maybe more if you have the ability, but every four to six weeks seems to be kind of a minimum. Uh, that way you'll have enough data. Again, the more data you have, the more reliable it becomes, and you don't see big swings or, or outliers in the information. So just to recap, 52.2 isn't perfect, but it's what we have. If you understand the limitations, you can evaluate a 52.2 report more effectively. Dust holding capacity with ASHRAE dust is mostly useless because of the size decrep discrepancy between ambient air dust and the test dust. Synthetic medias will look good on paper, but when you do an in-situ test or measure their performance in use, they'll be a lot less attractive to you. And in-situ testing is the best option if you have the instrumentation, uh, mainly laser particle counter, the other stuff you can usually do with even the basic control systems nowadays. Uh, but the laser particle counter seems to be the one thing that people uh, don't always have. You know, I go out and spend five or six grand or more on one of those um, if you're just going to do a filter test once. Um, so if you're within our geographical area here, we do actually offer uh, this testing, or we call them filter audits. If you are interested, just uh, let us know.